This presentation shows you how to install the L-strain sensors on various silo legs and wire them to the DGB and indicator. Then it shows the bolt tightening procedure to ensure that you don't overstress the sensor and all the other things that make this installation a success. First you need to determine the best position for mounting the sensors. This is usually in the center of the longest section of leg between the cross braces as shown on the lower picture. This is covered more fully in the manual. For our installation example, we are using a skirted silo with additional strengthening beams attached to its wall. In this case, you should install them three quarters of the way from the floor to the cone attachment ring. In general, find the longest run between joints or attachments away from doors, and if there are more legs or strengthening beams than sensors, position them at roughly equal intervals where possible. On L section or angle iron legs, position them as shown at right. For roll formed agricultural legs, position them as shown at bottom. If you have the new stainless steel sensors with curved mounting pads, mount them directly on the leg as shown, ensuring that there is no contact between the end of the sensor and the inner wall, and use a curved washer on the outer curve as shown. All the other mountings should use spring washers. On skirted silos without strengtheners, position the sensors in the second section downward from the cone supporting ring as shown. The rule is three quarters of the distance between ground and the cone attachment ring. Space the sensors evenly around the silo wall. For example, if there are four sensors for each silo, start about 45 degrees from the door and continue at 90 degree intervals. The general rule is to use one sensor for every eight feet of circumference. If this installation is on a new silo under construction, the stress can be maximized and errors minimized if the leveling bolts under the silo bottom rim are backed out half a turn directly under the sensor mounting points to make them tight and slackened in all the other locations. This will allow them to touch the foundation but not be tight against it. The difference will be eliminated when the cement grouting is filled into the gap, but by then the extra stress has been established. Position the drilling template on the flat part of the beam or leg. Ideally, the two vertical holes should be close to the center line of the beam, if it's wide enough, but this is not critical. Avoid the curved portion. The template is the same size as the sensor, which helps here. Draw a line parallel to the edges of the beam or just position the template by eye, if you wish. Tip the template in position and use the center punch to punch the holes ready for drilling. Here you see the holes being center punched. This is the through hole installation kit. It includes the center punch and template shown on the previous video. Remove the template and drill three small holes using the smallest drill. Use the medium drill to widen the holes and then use the large drill to make the full size holes. The small bottle contains the Loctite 638 for mounting the sensors. If you have to install a lot of sensors, it makes sense to buy or rent a magnetic drill that clamps onto the steel. Use a half inch or 13 millimeter cutter, part number C5000 from Granger, as shown here. This shows the mag drill and cutter in operation to make the hole in one step. Have someone else lubricate the bit or cut slowly as shown here. Don't forget to scrape away any loose paint or lightly sand the attachment area and remove any burrs left from the drilling operation with a larger drill, a file or a countersinking tool. When you are ready to mount the sensors, apply a line of Loctite 638 across each end of each pad as shown or around the edges of the copper washers. If any of the copper washers have become detached, glue them back on first. Assemble the spring washers onto the bolts with convex side facing out. Assemble these onto the sensor 
and carefully slide this whole thing into the mounting holes. Put the washers and nuts on the other side with convex side facing out. Move the sensor up, down and sideways to ensure that the bolts are free inside the holes. Then tighten a bit more than finger tight to ensure that they stay in place. Mounting on a curved wall requires the new stainless sensors with curved mounting pads. If the ones with flat grooved pads are used, the copper washers must be bonded onto the pads first, with their flat sides located vertically, by placing the sensor with the cable on the left hand side. Add the Loctite on all three mounting pads as shown. As before, assemble the spring washers onto the bolts, insert the bolts through the sensors, and assemble into the mounting holes. Centralize the bolts in the holes and tighten so that they cannot move. Here you see the placing of the sensor onto the mounting holes. The washers and nuts are being assembled on the back side of the beam. Before the Loctite starts to set, which takes a minimum of two minutes, slide the sensor up, down and sideways to locate all the bolts in the centers of the mounting holes. Once this is done, Tighten the bolts about one-sixth of a turn, more than finger tight, to ensure that they don't move while the Loctite is bonding. Then leave it at least for half an hour. Repeat this procedure for all your sensors. Wait at least half an hour for the Loctite to set. While you are waiting for this sensor, you can install more sensors or install junction boxes. To do this, mark the mounting holes, punch them and drill the holes using the smallest drill. Then widen using the number 9 or 5mm drill bit size if the steel is thicker than 1 of an inch. If the metal is thin enough, you can use the self-drilling screws directly. This shows the positioning of the junction box and the marking of the holes. This shows the punching of the holes ready for drilling. This shows the drilling of the holes in thick steel without the use of the small first drill. This shows the screws being assembled to hold the junction box in place.
Once the junction boxes are in place, run the cables and pull them through the strain release into the box. Pull most of the sensor cable into the box. It can be coiled inside the box after connection. Strip the cable about 3 to 4 inches and save the jacket to insulate the bare shield wire as shown. Connect the yellow wire from the sensor to the shield wire and each other wire to the same color on the outgoing cable. If you have more than four sensors, some will be connected as pairs in this junction box. The DJB500 replaces the final junction box and all the cables from the sensors, four in total, come to this box. Strip these cables four inches and connect the wire as shown here. The shield wires can be twisted together and insulated with one of the discarded sheaths. Connect this to the ground connector on the metal carrier behind the circuit board, but do not tighten the screw tightly as it can cut through the copper wires if you do. The touchscreen indicator or siloway.net DAQ unit has to be connected to the nearest silo using the same cable used for the sensors or for very long distances a special low capacitance cable which we supply. It is important to run the cables from each DJB to the next in daisy chain or multi-drop fashion with no branches to the side exactly as shown here. The RS485 wiring method demands this and if branches are used it may not communicate properly. Black is the power negative and connects to 0V. Red is plus 24 volts and goes to V+. Plus. Green goes to A which is TR+, plus, and white to B which is TR-. Minus. Finally, and only on the last DGB in the chain, place the jumper found on J2 or JP2 of each DJB onto both pins of the J2 or JP2 header directly behind the TR plus and minus or A and B connector. Check that the jumper on all other DJBs is on one pin only or is missing. This connects the termination resistor at the end of the RS-485 line and not anywhere in between. The objective of the next step is to tighten all the bolts to their full torque without breaking the sensor. You do this by measuring the sensor output while it is being tightened. You can use a meter on the millivolt range and measure between the white and green wires at the junction box or if, you touch the, if your touch screen is close by you can monitor the DJB setup screen for the associated vessel. Slowly tighten each bolt while watching the meter or display. If it shows over 5 millivolts either way, stop and loosen the sensor. Clean the Loctite from the mounting surface, reapply the Loctite and reassemble. Wait for the Loctite to set and repeat the procedure. If the holes don't line up with the sensor's holes, you can widen them. Here you see the tightening procedure, a quarter turn at a time on each bolting turn. You can't see the meter, but you can see the helper on the left glancing at it. To achieve the final torque, continue tightening as long as the millivolt limit is not being exceeded. When the torque wrench hits its value, it will click. Check it again to make sure and repeat for each bolt. The final talking procedure. Listen for the click and then check them all again. Once the sensors are installed, attach the stickers to the metal structure. First, clean each sticker location and use the Loctite or any instant glue to secure the metal pads to the structure in a straight line. Leave them to set for half an hour and attach the cables using the tie wraps provided. 
If you are using sticky tabs, they can fall off, but instant glue works on these too. Coil the cables inside the junction boxes and close the covers. Read the astronaut address label on each DGB which is associated with each vessel. Enter and check the DGB address for each vessel in the DGB setup menu. Now double check each vessel and ensure that you're using the correct address for each one. Look at the LED on the circuit board. It normally flashes at a slow rate, but when it is polled, it will flash quickly. This shows that it is receiving the polling message and is sending a response. Plug any unused holes with the plugs provided or a piece of cable and attach the cover after checking the gasket carefully. Verify that the readings are being received by the touch screen or DAQ unit by watching the data change in the calibration program. Almost last but not least, protect your installation if it is outdoors by coating with the material supplied or any suitable rust proofing if we did not ship it because of air transport rules. Any color is fine but light reflecting colors are best. This sensor was installed several years before and was not protected. As a result the washers have corroded and lost most of their strength. Don't let this happen in your case. Don't forget to add the sun shields if the vessel is outdoors. If your legs are larger than the sun shields, we can supply larger ones. These give a three to four times improvement in stability. We also have proprietary filtering on both SiloA2 Pro and SiloA.net that makes a huge improvement on stability. Contact us if you have any difficulty. Chris Shawcroft or Robin Shepherdson are ready to help you and can be reached at these mobile numbers any time of day or night, or contact us by email at these addresses. Alternatively, we have dealers trained in the installation of these systems and they can help you.